first step What can figure it out That's how it chooses you Hello! Hi! I'm so excited. I am Claire Patton. And I'm Teresa Sparks. This is our podcast, It Chooses You. Uh, we talk about things we like, uh, stories that interest us, etc. Welcome to Smidgen Edition. Yes, my favorite time of the week. I apparently cannot say Smidgen or Smidgen Edition without kind of singing it. <laughs> Smidgen Edition! Yeah, I mean, you're all getting the full effect of my weirdness. Like, this is really a compliment to you all out there that I'm comfortable enough yes. to sing at you. <laughs> and you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> it's a compliment to you that I'm singing at you. Also, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yes, I love that you sing it. Well, it's a weird combination of uh, syllables to say in a row, which is why I like it so much. I do too. And also it, it makes you sound like you're speaking lazily, even if you're pronouncing everything exactly crisply as it should be. Smidge edition. <laughs> yeah. Smidge edition. edition. Yeah. Smidge edition. It's good. I wanted to tell you about this fantastic series I watched on Netflix real quick. Is it Bridgerton's? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, I texted you earlier this week. It's called Lupin. Oh, yes. So it's a French series on Netflix. Yeah. It's L-U-P-I-N. Yeah, it's a flower. There's a Monty Python skit about it. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a series based on novels about a gentleman burglar. It's inspired by that. Nice. But it melds social justice issues, hmm. and it stars Omar Sy, who's a mysterious, sexy, and also really quite vulnerable actor. Hmm. There's five episodes out. Uh, I will warn you that the last episode is a pretty deep cliffhanger. Okay. However, there's going to be five more episodes this year. Okay. At some point. Okay. So, yes, you texted me about it, and I was like, I will put that on the list. Well, I was so frustrated because uh, I was the only one who would watch it because <laughs> it requires reading <laughs> subtitles. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it used to be that not watching subtitled things was like some kind of American snobbery or laziness or yeah. aversion to reading. Yeah. But now it's really become this, well, I can't play around on my phone while I'm watching it, so I won't yes, it watch it. It requires my attention. Yeah. And and it's it, this show is interesting because not only does it require your attention because it's in French and you're reading subtitles, but then it requires your attention because it's such a fast, smart show. Mm that fucks with you pretty often. Mm. Apparently I like being fucked with cool. by my media and uh, that you really do have to pay attention. And I did talk my mom into watching it and she called me Friday and was like, S so you didn't tell me it was a cliffhanger. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I haven't finished all five episodes. And she was like, you haven't. So I called her Saturday and she goes, are you calling me because you finished Lupin? And I was like, I have to talk to someone about it. <laughs> so Tim has now watched three episodes. So at least we can kind of discuss it. But yeah. I was, do uh, you know that feeling when you are excited about something and you just can't share it with anyone? Yes. Yes, I do. I yeah. went to class and I was like, has anyone seen Bridgerton's yet? My friend Ariel, when she finally watched it, she sent me a meme of uh, the world on fire and Will Ferrell shouting, but have you seen Bridgerton's? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, where'd you find my portrait, man? <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Yep. So everybody check out Lupin on I'm very, Netflix very if excited. you're not averse to reading something. <laughs> I don't think anyone would have the patience to listen to us if they didn't already like reading. But today we are talking about jigsaw puzzles. Yes. I'm really excited because I love, I, you told me what you were going to talk about. And I re have very fond memories of this moment. I want to start with a story filled with a cast of familiar characters who are regular listeners. <laughs> <laughs> so... It was just after Christmas, I want to say maybe seven years ago, yeah, eight years a, ago. It's been a while. Yeah. You said to me, you called me, or it was one of the many times you were hanging out with us. You said, I have an activity. We're going to go somewhere and do something, but I'm not going to tell you what. You just have to trust me. 
And I thought, oh, what is, you know, what could it possibly be? <laughs> and you took me, my partner, Tim, and our friend, Jeffrey. Mm-hmm. Jeffrey and Tim have both been on the podcast. Yes. You took us to Liberty Puzzles in Boulder. That's right. Which is a wooden jigsaw puzzle company. Yes. I would call it artisan. Yes. And we went there. We toured the factory, if you could call it a factory. It was really just one room. <laughs> yeah. I think they use a laser cutter. So, yeah, it's like yeah. one machine. But, yes, it's yeah. a factory. The, the thing that was so memorable about this, besides I hadn't heard of Liberty Puzzles. I didn't know they existed. So this is so cool. Was that they have this, their ante room is, was at the time their shop. They now have a retail establishment on Pearl Street in Boulder. And they do sell their puzzles online. But they had a shop and then they had a table where there was a puzzle you could do. Yes. And this was, if I recall correctly, it was a rather large Christmas-themed puzzle. That's right. Yeah. I, I remember Santa. Yes, I remember Santa as well. So if you think you know what a jigsaw puzzle is, you know mass-produced jigsaw patterns. You do not know Liberty Puzzles. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah. So this puzzle, uh, they're, it's made of very light wood, mm-hmm. and they have remarkably in, intricate designs to the pieces. Mm-hmm. So they can be human figures or animals, or just cool abstract patterns, and they all interlock together in really unique ways. Yes, I think most of Santa was a monkey, as a matter of fact, with a tail. That's my memory anyway. And on occasion, those pieces are associated with the theme of the puzzle. So we, Jeffrey, Tim, you and I, sat down at this table to do to work on the Santa puzzle. And I think at the time we all thought, well, you know, we'll sit here for 20 minutes and work on this puzzle. Uh, and no, we were there for hours yeah. and we did the entire puzzle. Mm-hmm. It was very, very <laughs> satisfying putting that last piece in. I think maybe you mm-hmm. did it even. Did you have the honors that day? Oh, it, it was good. could be. I'm not sure. Yeah. It was really good though. I was like, oh. But the great thing about it is at one point we looked up at the receptionist who was sitting, you know, 10 feet away at her desk, probably going, what the fuck? (laughs) Okay, guys. Yeah. We said, do do people often stay here and do the entire puzzle? And she was like, no. (laughs) And then a little while later, and by a little while, I mean probably an hour or two later, we looked up and said, do you mind that we're here doing this is is this cool and she said no it's fine but uh, we do close at 4 30 <laughs> yeah <laughs> which as i recall lit a fire for us mm-hmm. to finish the damn puzzle that's right we're like okay let's get hopping yeah exactly yeah yeah this is what happens when you put four driven nerds together <laughs> and give them an activity that's mm-hmm. free and, uh, and a deadline. And here we go. I just feel... We, we didn't buy anything, Teresa. That was shitty. We should have bought something. I have purchased three puzzles from them since, and they are okay. not cheap. So yeah. I, I, I took care of it. <laughs> okay, good. I've purchased a couple as well. Uh, so uh, that is one of my most cherished memories brought to me by our friendship. Yes. I loved that lady because I was like, well, in my mind, I was like, you offer, you offer this. And we're just taking full advantage of it. That's all that's happening right here. Start to finish, yeah. baby. They, I think we did a tour, like a brief tour of the factory first. Like, here's how we make them. And here's yeah. here are the puzzles we currently have for sale. And this is sort of what we do. And, you know, why we got into it or what. None of which I remember. But it's their online Liberty Puzzles. You can look them up. But So we had the tour. And then we're like, well, why don't we just, we just work on a puzzle? Yeah. yeah. And that reception, was, I think she was like 18 years old. Or y- younger, and we're all, you know, sort of roughly early middle-aged, <laughs> so she can't really say, no, get out. But yes, we definitely uh, inhabited her space for longer than she had anticipated we would. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I think the thing about the Liberty Puzzles is that, you know, a lot of puzzles have art on them, but Liberty Puzzles are a piece of art in their own right. Yeah. They're, they're very satisfying to touch, they're very satisfying weight. And, and then obviously the visual of the pieces being so interesting. You can, they actually have pictures and you can, if you can manage to flip it over, the back becomes a really cool design as well because you have all the, you can really see all the designs of the interlocking pieces. It's mm-hmm. so clever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're wonderful. And they are so, the pieces interlock in such a way that I think it's possible to actually pick up 
a Liberty puzzle and hang it from the top row of pieces because right. they interlock in such a way that um, that that's safe and you absolutely can't do that. You'd have to mount and frame and do all kinds of other stuff yeah. to another puzzle. Yeah. But yeah, they are works of art for sure. I bought one for my sister this Christmas. Did you? Yeah, they um they because of COVID, so of course they don't have the option for you to hang out and do a puzzle right now. Um, but they are so busy that you actually have to get on a wait list to buy a puzzle. And so you sign up and then they email you when you have 24 hours to go to the shop and, and mm. purchase a puzzle. And so I thought, oh my gosh, my sister would love that. She recently redid her living room and she has peacock stuff in there. And I was like, they do a peacock puzzle. I've seen it. It's so beautiful. I'm going to buy it for her. And I was like, shit, I have to get on a waiting list. Ah, and then, thankfully, very, very close to Christmas, um, they let me buy. So she received it about 10 days after Christmas, which is, I mean, that's that's COVID Christmas. Everyone gets their presents in January. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> totally. Yeah. I looked it up, and uh, not surprisingly, in 2020, sales of puzzles skyrocketed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? So, hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which I will also note, they also skyrocketed during the Great Depression. <laughs> so that gives you any idea of where we're at. Yeah, that's right. It's puzzles and... Uh, video games and entertainment home home based entertainment of all kinds yeah, yeah exactly i guess Ravensburger, which is one of the biggest puzzle manufacturers said their sales were up 370 percent last year <laughs> from 2019 yeah. like year over year it's like <laughs> shit so i think it's probably adjusted a bit now but there was this time last year where it was actually hard to get your hands on a puzzle <laughs> I never thought the great puzzle shortage of 2020 would be the stuff of an episode, but I love it. I yeah. love it. Yeah. <laughs> but I like puzzles because, first of all, it's making order out of chaos. Of course. So satisfying. Always. I also like that it's a really focused activity that still doesn't trigger my competitive side. Yeah, it's cooperative. Yes. It is. You know, most focused activities invoke it, some sort of competition, even if it's not against someone else, just some sort of drive for me. But I, it still remains very zen for me, you know? Yeah. I've actually, I haven't played a game with you in so long that I have forgotten that you're that competitive. And now I'm just remembering all of the times you have demonstrated that you're that competitive. Yeah. And it's, I have a delightful little highlight reel playing in my head right now. It's, yeah, yeah. I do. I really enjoy cooperative games for that reason, because yeah. I don't like how competitive she's, I can be. She's fucking cutthroat kids. She will stab you. I don't even know if it's competitive. It's just, it's, it's like, it's that only child syndrome of like, no, I'm the only one who exists people like it goes much deeper than even competitive <laughs> you're like it's not even a competition because you're no competition for me i mm -hmm. am the, <laughs> i'm the pinnacle <laughs> yeah so puzzles not that for me it's also a really cool i think i've always done puzzles with other people yeah and it's a really cool way of being alone together mm-hmm Mm -hmm. Because you can chat, you can listen to a podcast, you can put your favorite movie on while you're doing it. And it's such an interesting, deep focus, yeah. but it's not all-consuming focus. Yeah, also, if um, one of the things tied to that is that unlike other kinds of games, there, it's not a turn-based thing. So if you yeah. decide you need to go and take a walk outside for half an hour, go ahead. Like, we'll yeah. just keep working on the puzzle. So it's easy to hop in and out of in a way that other games aren't. Yeah. The other interesting thing about puzzles is that, like so many things in life, the goal is just to finish. That's right. Yep. Do you know what I mean? You'd never say, wow, I did that puzzle really well. I'm sure there's some people who do. Yeah. But you don't really, you get satisfaction, but it's not tied to your self-worth necessarily. Right. It's either done or it's not. There's no, yeah. there's no quality of being done. It either is or <laughs> exactly. isn't. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question for you, Teresa. Do you have, when you do a puzzle, do you have a specific method and approach? So I am the third most avid puzzle doer in my family. Uh, my sister very, very much liked them for a very long time. She's sort of gotten out of them as she's gotten more busy. But she likes them enough that I bought her one for Christmas this year. And she said, it's absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much. She loved it. So. When I would do puzzles, I would do them with my mother and my sister, who were the ones actually doing the puzzle. And I was, oh. I was like, also doing the puzzle, you know? So they were, like, more serious. <laughs> yeah, serious and, like, got more satisfaction out of it or something. I feel like it was definitely their activity in a way. 
Um, and they definitely did. I mean, Cassandra was like, I'll take the sky. And mom's like, I'll look for the border. You know, like you, you start with the border, then you do the sky and then yeah. you, you know, work from there. We do that too. Yeah. We do that kind of divide and conquer. Mm-hmm. Like everybody works on a particular section. Yeah, that's it. And I think you do, if you can, need to get that border going first. Yes, absolutely. Well, and the, the thing about doing it by sections is that then you can sort of color match and have your own pile of pieces you're sort of working with. So you're yeah. not all roaming around the table all the time. Yeah. Yep. I think my least favorite part of doing the puzzle is the initial organization yeah. of like, oh, this is all you know, based on how complex the puzzle is. But, you know, this is all this section. These are these colors. Mm-hmm. This, that that doesn't. And also turning the pieces over. I don't really enjoy, you know, when you <laughs> yeah. pour them out of the box and half of them are upside down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but this um, it's exactly the same feeling I get when Mike wants to play certain of his games. And some of them take literally an hour and a half to set up because that's the kind of game he enjoys playing. And so he mm-hmm. bought one recently and he's been reading. I mean, it looks like the Encyclo- Encyclopedia Britannica, this rule book. I mean, it's just book after book after book of rules. And I was like, are we ever going to play this? Or <laughs> He's like, no, no, I'll read through. I think I've got it now. And I was like, okay, well, on a day when you have three hours to set up and you feel like doing that, I'd be happy to play for a couple hours, but I'm not, I'm not helping set up. That's not my, no, no, no. Yeah. Because I'm happy to play games that require zero setup. I'll just go right. online and play Bid Euchre for a few hours, you know? Like, <laughs> Tic-tac-toe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the setup is uh, is not my favorite part either. <laughs> well, I'd just like to close with a few recommendations that some people may not have heard of in mm. terms of puzzles. As I mentioned, Liberty Puzzles. Yes. Everyone check them out. If you can get one, they're lovely objects. I was only on the waiting list for about three weeks. So it's a relatively oh, quick, I mean, given everything is relatively quick yeah, turnaround. Not too bad. Um, I looked up the uh, largest puzzle you can buy. Mm. Mm. So there's a 54,000 piece. <gasps> oh my God. There's a 5,100 piece. Uh, it's a Kodak puzzle. You can buy it on Amazon. I was just curious about how much that cost. Mm. You can buy it on Amazon for five hundred dollars <gasps> if you're interested. Oh my god! But you need some like dedicated space for that kind of thing. Yeah, and then when it's done, what do you do? Do you just dismantle it? Do you <laughs> spray it with adhesive and put it behind a frame, and then you have a puzzle of a landscape in your house? Like, yeah. You know what I think you do is you just pour some kind of shellac over it, and it just becomes your floor. <laughs> That's what I'm going to make the floors out of in the tiny house. Puzzles. (laughs) That would be so cool. It would be so cool. The website Tiger Tree has some cool puzzles. Vasily Kandinsky, Keith Haring, things like that. A really nice selection of art puzzles. And, you know, you can get two-sided puzzles that, you know, it can be even the same image, but just like turn 90 degrees Mm -hmm. or something, which sounds so hard to me. I'm imagining the Kandinsky puzzle right now and a lot of his stuff, like so many solid color backgrounds, like whoo, challenging. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And then also one year we were given a custom puzzle Mm -hmm. so you can upload a picture and get puzzles made. (laughs) I'm going to send you, I'm going to make a puzzle for you guys. It's me doing a thumbs (laughs) Oh my God, just giant face. Oh, so much fun. Well, the one we were sent was a custom puzzle of our cat, (laughs) and our cat is black and white, and it was the hardest puzzle we've ever done, because there was just so much black and white. And then the other cool puzzle we've done that people may not know about is called a wasgidge, which is the word jigsaw backwards. Okay. So it's W-A-S-G-I-J, and the the wasgidge is a puzzle where the image that you're given on the box is from one perspective looking one direction. And then the puzzle itself is the reverse perspective looking the other direction. So for instance, the one that we were, the one that we purchased was a cartoony European townscape. Hmm. Where there were people running, people dropping things, people screaming from the balconies. So it was this, you know, scene of chaos. And then when you put it together, you see a giant Indiana Jones style boulder rolling down the street. So you kind of explain the the perspective explains what's going on and why the scene on the box is the scene on the box. That's cool. So you don't actually have a sense of the image. Yeah. Completely as you do it. So it's challenging, but it's also really fun. So check those out. And that's what I got for puzzles. It was amazing. Thank you. Yeah, they're (laughs) delightful. If I, you know, space and time. Yeah. Well, I think maybe this is on the when the war is over list. Like, let's go back to Liberty Puzzles. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, <laughs> Jeffrey will come in from Paonia for the weekend. That's and we'll right. And we'll go and we'll do a puzzle for four hours. And we will stay there forever. That's right. <laughs> no, no, no. We live here now. Yeah. Uh, don't you remember us from 12 years ago? Yeah, we're back. He'd be like, no, I don't. Please leave. I have to go home. I can't lock up with you in here. <laughs> yeah. We'll keep you posted on how we torture the folks at Liberty Puzzles. Thanks, Claire. That was amazing. I'm glad you love them because I love them too. It was fun. Thank you everyone for listening. We will be back in a few days with another episode for you. Yay. Comments, questions, email us. It chooses you podcast at gmail.com. Yay. See you, Claire. Bye-bye. Testing. Great. Thank you for listening to It Chooses You. Your hosts are Teresa Sparks and Claire Patton. Our theme song is by Bobby Dart. If you'd like to get in touch with us, drop us an email at itchoosesyoupodcast at gmail.com.